Hey, you fucks. Thanks for, you know, checking out the videos, showing a little bit of support. How about you take it to the next level and uh, show us some love over there on Patreon, huh? 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 Tomo ni ikumata saigo ni kikasete namida namida so nanda biba namida koborete chite yukeba ija mure janai Oh man, tomara nai kimi mo kimi no kono koto ga suki namida namida so nanda guys look at this this is footage from when I went to um, Kyoto. This is right after I got my tattoo at Gion Daruma in Kyoto. And um, everyone was like, oh my god, you don't know Gion? Oh my god, it's so fucking good. And, and anyway, um, I, I had no idea. I, you know, whenever I think of Kyoto, I think of that gold temple and the monkey park and a lot of buses and really good Japanese candy. And uh, anyway, yeah, this is footage that I have not yet uh, used to put in my Kyoto vlog of when I went down there. And so I thought today I'm going to talk over B-roll while talking to you guys. And um, and yeah, and just uh, do another rant because even though today is technically not a day where I'm scheduled to do a live stream, uh, you know, I want to stick to my schedule of doing live streams. And I don't want to just do them randomly. I want you guys to have like some kind of prediction. For when I'm doing this stuff, so, um, so yeah, but I, I still wanted to spiel, I still wanted to talk, hence why I am doing a rant while talking over this fucking food. Look at this, like, you know, uh, I heard that the Yakuza pretty much run these places because they're kind of unregulated ish, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, this is fucking good though. Like, look at this, this is like high quality schnitzel. Yeah, shit, fuck. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, after I got my tattoo, they were like, you should check out the temple. And I'm like, what temple? And uh, anyway, right down the street from the tattoo place was this giant fucking temple area called Gion. And apparently it's super famous for having awesome, huge-ass Japanese festivals. And so, yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Look at that. That's like Hokkaido something or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'm... I forgot what I'm asking here. Wakasaki Tempura. Yeah, like you could just see, people are having fun. They're eating. They're, they're eating street food. They're chilling. They're enjoying the stuff. And uh, yeah, what is that? Wakagagi Tempura. Oh, I think. Oh, it's fish. Okay, it's like little river fish. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, anyway, I thought I would just talk and spiel today because that's what I does. That's what Cash Baby would do, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna cue my jazz music in the background to get me in the mood here. Yeah, cause I I don't know. I wanted to talk about stuff that's been happening, like uh, or like that. Just not it's like oh my god, what's been happening? I mean, just like recent stuff that I've been doing, and just like um, I don't know, but how it reflects me being an older dude here in in Tokyo versus like you know when I was a younger dude, you know, like um. Because I got to hang out, hang out, hung out. I got to hang out with my buddy, Mr. Coco Sports on Twitch. Go check him out. He's my buddy Dave, who uh, he knows everything about Japanese sports for the most part. And he'll be humble and he'll be like, no, 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 I don't know anything, but he does. And uh, anyway, so I went to go watch a pro wrestling thing with him last night, and that was really fun. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, what was it like, you know, I... Um, you know, I got to talk to him, and he's also, like, kind of a longtime uh, foreigner here in Japan. And so I just wanted to talk about what we talked about while showing you guys this footage. But anyway, it's the four-minute mark, and I always try to remember this when I, we get to the four-minute part here. And, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, big shout-out to the sponsors of today's video, patreon.com slash Tikyo Sam. Uh, I don't make any money off of these videos, so, like, Google AdSense, just nothing, you know? So anytime any of you guys go over to Patreon and support me, whether it's a dollar or you super chat in the comments, uh, you know, you leave a super thanks in the comments section or you do a super chat during a premiere or a live stream like that's actual direct cash that i get that helps fuel this channel so then it pays for stuff like when i went to fucking kyoto you know like um 
you guys basically fund the trips and fund the stuff for me to go and uh, enjoy this shit and like actually make content that it takes me a year or two to pump out. But that's besides the point. Uh, yeah, the point is is that uh, if you guys like the content and you want to see me expand on it or whatever, um, supporting me through the super chats or going directly to Patreon helps me out a bunch. So thank you so much for that. Um, also, uh, I don't know. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you to everybody who became a member on both channels. And, uh, yeah, if you guys really like this community and you like interacting with the people here and you like what I make, uh, go over to the Discord. Uh, the Discord link's down below. And, uh, I don't know. We just got a good community of solid, solid guys and even some gals there. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. I just it's fun talking to you guys and I like it that we can continue the conversation when I'm not even live streaming. So, that's fun. So go ahead and check out those links and of course follow me on social media. Um I, I have pop-ups throughout these whole videos, but just uh yeah, I need more followers. I I don't care if you don't ever check social media. You go over there and you follow me on all the things. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just because uh, it's support, you know, and uh, sometimes I release separate different kinds of content on this platform, so you just got to go over and check it out, and uh, yeah, don't forget to smash like button, subscribe, and uh, comment, and I guess the question of the day will be, um, you know, uh, do you guys uh, ever go to any events that are around your place that are local, and um, Oh, God, it's just the part where I was taking a break behind the, the temple thing. Oh, yeah, I was walking around here, and I was like, oh, shit. I was like, what's going on here? Like, there's 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 stairs and everything, and... Wait, what happened? What happened to the camera? Okay, hold on. I might have to cut this part because the... And never mind. I paused it, and it looks like the camera only went black for a couple seconds. Yeah. Now, sometimes I accidentally put the camera, like, in my pocket, and it's still recording, and then I'm like, uh-oh. And then, like, the camera just fucking recorded for, like... 30 minutes of just like you hear pocket shuffling and then that's it but uh what the hell i thought this was okay okay there we go there we go now i'm back yeah um okay okay that's good yeah because it's like um oh man like i need to get a new gopro by the way like i think i've dropped my gopro a little bit too many times like the mic is like all sensitive on them now and uh it's really annoying and i don't like it i don't like it but anyway I just, I, don't you love Japanese aesthetic? Like, when was the last time you saw something like this in fucking China or Korea, huh? You know? <laughs> All, like, there's gonna be, like, two people that watch my stuff, and they're gonna be like, I'm in China, I'm in Korea, and they have stuff like this, and I'm like, well, why don't I ever see it on my channel? And they're like, because you don't go to South Korea or China. I'm like, yeah, lame excuse, man. Lame excuse. Um, but yeah, anyway, anyway, so I am, uh... Yeah, I'm sitting here today. I'm I'm just chilling, and uh, oh yeah, I made a wish. You're supposed to drop the coin in there, and then uh, you know clap your hand and then bow twice, and then shake the thing and then bow again, and uh, that's what you get your wish for. And it's pretty cool, you know. Um, but yeah, ah man, this was fun. This was this was a fun trip. Just going there, getting my tattoo, and then immediately going to a festival afterwards. But again, it's like when you go to something like this, it's always fun to go with like family or friends or something like, you know, you go on, going by yourself is cool and you're exploring, but, uh, it's always great when you can find somebody to share that part of your life with. And, uh, yeah, I'm wearing a mask cause it was still like he big, heavy Corona times during this time when I filmed it. It's so funny when I think about all this extra footage I have from when I traveled during Corona and it was nice too. Like people complain about how Corona sucked, but it only really sucked for business people, you know? Hold on. Mm. Mm. Getting my morning coffee in. Um, yeah, Corona times only really sucked for uh, business people because, like, businesses would get fined if people didn't have masks, if they didn't have rubbing alcohol available. Um, you know, it wasn't good for businesses, but... Being just a regular dude, like a civilian, it wasn't really that bad. And, like, it was actually nice being a foreigner during that time because when people saw you as a foreigner, it was all over the news that the only foreigners in Japan that could stay there at the time were working or studying. 
So it's like oh, there weren't any fucking fake ass tourists there the whole time. You know, it's not just people being like, oh, my God, I'm going to come here, get like 50 fucking Instagram photos and then, you know, eat some food and tell everybody how cultured I am because I went to Japan for five seconds. You know, crab stick. Yep. That's a stick on a crab. Yep. Um. And so it was nice, you know, it was nice. And it's funny, like, you know, um, during this festival, uh, you know, there's a lot of memories whenever you look at stuff like this. But my biggest memory from this festival is that I saw a white guy and he was walking with his Japanese wife and he had a dog and he was talking to the dog in Japanese. And I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> it's just like, but then I realized that when I was younger and I was really getting into Japanese immersion, I did that too. Not talking to the dog, but it's just like, I tried to use Japanese as much as possible. And, um, and yeah, it's like, I have to constantly remind myself that it's like, I've been here a while, you know? Like, if somebody's doing something where I think it's kind of like fake and gay or like stupid, that it's like, I did, did I do that too though? Did I do that? And if I if I can remember that I did that, then I'm like, okay, I gotta shut the fuck up now. But look at this, like, uh, oh my god, look at that! Like, I forgot that this was during Hanami season. Like, how cool is this, right? There's all these fucking lights and sakura plumage all around and shit. And um, yeah, but anyway, I just remember that white guy speaking Japanese to his dog, and then um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, God, man. That was one thing that was funny. It's like they were like, this is Corona. You need to wear a mask. But that just meant you had to have a mask on your face. So everybody just chin diapered it up. But, um, yeah, this was so cool, man. I, you had to reserve a table, though. So you couldn't just, like, um, you couldn't just, like, sit down at some places. But look at how comfortable that is, right? They had, like, all these, like, comfortable-ass fucking pillows to sit on and these little mini tables. And people just getting drunk as shit. See, you're never going to find this in Tokyo. Like, you'll see this maybe a little bit on occasion, but you're not going to see this all the time in Tokyo, you know? And uh, I love that. Like, this is one of the things, like, why you need to leave uh, fucking, like, you know, the bigger cities and go to Kyoto, which is also a bigger city. You know, I had a viewer of my... Hey, Boris, I'm calling you out, Boris, if you fucking watch these videos. I had a viewer of mine named Boris come out and... Uh, and yeah, oh, oh yeah, they wanted a group picture with me. That was cool. I was like, yep, okay. Um, but yeah, one of my viewers, Boris, I told him Kyoto sucks. And he's like, I have to disagree, Tikyo. That I think, you know, despite Mortal, Com uh, despite Mortal Kombat being a great game, that Donkey Kong is uh, graphically on par and also uh, highly superior to that game. Donkey Kong sucks. And I'm like, well, you know what, Boris, you suck. <laughs> You know what, Boris? You don't know Kyoto. Kyoto's actually his pictures of Kyoto looks really good. So uh, I should, yeah, Boris, if you're watching this, you should like send me pictures of the time you went in Kyoto, so then I can just tell people if they're like, "Why is Kyoto good?" I'm like, "Okay, this guy seemed to have a good time in Kyoto." But yeah, this was just beautiful, right? Like, fuck, man. Like this, is, when I think of Japan, I think of this. I think of people hanging out in spring under the cherry blossom trees, uh, you know, outside in a formal semi. I mean, like, this is some uh, fucking like yakuza, like Ryuga Gotoku, PlayStation Three kind of shit right here. You know, that's this is the real shit. You know, this is the real Japan stuff. And again, it was so nice because it's like I get it. I get it. Everybody. Who's a tourist in Japan? They want to experience Japan. They want to have the Tom Cruise moment. But the thing is, is that when there's like 500 other Tom Cruises around trying to have a Tom Cruise moment, it's uh, it makes the it feels like it waters it down, right? And so that's why it's like I always encourage my viewers during my live streams that it's like, dude, if you want to really experience Japan, you need to experience the places where there's no foreigners. And unfortunately, thanks to the yen being so cheap, it, the tourism's never going to stop, or at least it's not going to stop. In the, in the immediate future, you know, like unless a big Corona happens again, it's not going to stop. So you need to go. But I mean, at the same time, though, this is a perfect opportunity for all these other places that don't have tourists or foreigners like working there and like factories. This is the perfect opportunity for you guys to go find a place like that. That's like not that popular and go there and explore it, you know, um, and they'll appreciate you so much more because, like, a lot of people go to all the other regular places, but you're one of the guys that went to, like, the non, you know, the non-regular places. And if you're like, well, which places should I go to? Just find a big place 
that has a lot of fucking, like, you know, like a Kyoto place or Osaka place, and then just go and find, like, a second uh, tier city or a smaller city or whatever. Because, like, I forget that when you're a foreigner here for the first time, you really want to, like, everything's exciting to you. Everything's cool. Everything's different and unique. And the only catch, though, is that if you guys try to go to those other tier cities, that you might need a car or, like, the public transportation is going to suck. But, um, you know, this is just, that's just part of the adventure. I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out eventually, you know? And look at that. That kid's got, like, a pop gun or something. I don't know what you call it. A cork gun? Yeah. Uh, it's, um... You know, it is kind of relieving to know that Japanese people, you know, they go through a lot of mental stress, but they're not going to go and fucking, like, you know, eat Fruit Loops out of the store that gives them cancer and, and mental illness and turns them trans or whatever, and then they want to shoot people. Like, they're, Japan doesn't have any of that, and that's uh, partially, I think, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that there's so much more gang violence of, like, you know, non-white people shooting non-white people. But America never, like, the news never wants to acknowledge it. Like, yeah, school shootings are bad, and they should not happen. Uh, but at the same time, the, you know, the amount of gun violence that is not school shooting related in America compared to all the rest of the gun violence is so fucking black and white. You know, it's, a, you know, uh, pun intended, but I'm, but I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just, it's, it's funny. It's funny that, like, you know, Japan uh, doesn't have those issues, you know. Like, sure, Japan, people go crazy sometimes, but for the most part, it's a fairly safe country. It always makes me laugh when all these, like, fucking white women on Twitter are like, Japan is not safe, and just because I live here doesn't mean that I can't criticize it. I'm like, well, if you come from a, a fucking not safe country like America, and then you come to Japan, and then you're preaching about how Japan's not safe... Um, I, I'll agree with people when they say that Japanese police suck at doing their job. I mean, they're great at doing, uh, you know, um, f uh, what is it? Stop and frisk and like, uh, you know, um, ganging up on people when they don't want to cooperate. But, uh, and like, but yeah, yeah, the cops are not good at, um, at solving crimes. Like, you know, they're good at like finishing the the solving of the crimes, but yeah, when you bring them a new thing, they're really bad at it, but, um, yeah, I don't know, it just makes me happy to know that Japanese people can't get access to guns that easily, and that they're not, uh, I, I don't know, it's like, in the UK, it's like, well, we got rid of guns, but we still have acid attacks and knife attacks, and it's like, yeah, man, it's fucked up fucking... Ugh, you know, I feel for you guys. Any, if any of you guys are in the UK that watch these videos, let me know. Like, how, like, let me hear your opinion. Because I know one of my mods, uh, he's in the UK. But I don't know where you guys are geography-wise. So it's like, is it really uh, as fucked up uh, as they say on the news? Or is it just, like, certain areas of certain cities and it's not that big are fucked up? Like, yeah, let me, let me know. I'm curious. But, yeah, it's just beautiful that you can think of, like, this is Japan right here. It's just a bunch of people hanging out, getting drunk with their friends on a... I don't even know what day this is. Could be, um... Could be a, a, a weekday or whatever. But look at these guys. These guys were so chill. Look at these dudes. I love it. They're just Yankee. They're just fucking hanging out and they're they're eating this stuff. And he's like, I'm like, yeah, dude. Oh yeah, I was saying like I like your style. And I'm like, you guys are cool. I, I you know that's the thing, man. You know you don't need to fake compliment people. When you see people that look cool, like fucking tell them. I'm like, I, I I'm pretty sure I was telling them. I'm like, dude, your style is pretty badass. If you went to New York, you could fuck some white chicks. <laughs> Or something, you know. People like hearing that. They like, you know, they like uh, getting the compliments kind of thing, you know. But, um, anyway, just, like, look at this, man. Like, this, tell me this is not from a video game. Like, holy shit, dude. Like, who needs, who needs video games when the IRL graphics are this good, you know. This is so good. Look at all these guys. They're being so chill. Look at that fucking Alaskan hunter hat, man. I'm probably talking about his hat or something. I don't know. Yeah, I can't wait to edit this video and actually, like, fucking film it and stuff. But look at these guys. They're just, ah. See, guys, this is why you learn Japanese. Because you can w walk around looking like an idiot like me, but then you can talk to people and actually, like, have a conversation with them. And that's pretty fun, you know? It's, it's funny because it's like, uh, 
you know, um, I've had people that have met me for five seconds and they're like, I hate TQ Sam. I hate him. And I'm like, yeah, you hate me because I have interactions like this with people, you fucking jealous bitch. You know, you wish you could talk to people and be extroverted like me, punk ass motherfucker. Look at this. These guys are having so much fun and just like everyone's being nice and saying hello and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, this is the thing, though. Like, you guys come to Japan, and you, if you learn Japanese and you make Japanese friends, you could come to a thing like this, and it's like you get settled in your town. But uh, don't get the wrong idea, though. I think that, oh, yeah, I'm telling this guy I love that he's blonde. Japanese people don't bleach their hair enough, man. It's only, like, pro wrestlers and, like, dudes who, like, are yonky, are bad boys. They they bleach their hair. But I'm just like, yeah, we got to keep that Kim Patsu love going, yeah. Um... But don't get it wrong, guys. Some places, they don't do stuff like this, though. So you got to make sure that if you're looking specifically for stuff like this, you might have to, like, there's people at this event that probably live, like, an hour away from there that they had to drive. Like, somebody had to be a designated driver for them to come and do this. And sometimes if you want to do something like this, there might not be parking around. So you'd have to find some place to park and then get on the train and then go on the train and then go on the bus somewhere or whatever, you know? Yeah. Oh, dude, this is so fun, man. I, I can't... Like, you know, this is another reason why I like filming these rants or, like, recording these rants. Because it's like, you know, um, you guys are like... Uh, what is it? It's like, yeah, like, release the footage. Like, I had... I uh, To be fair, I've only had one negative comment... And uh, it was like, yeah, you know, you, you you know you talk a big game, but all you're doing is just on your rant channel just talking over B-roll. And I'm like, well, to be fair, I had years where I was just doing regular fucking videos where I was on my motorcycle and outside walking around and shit. So it's like if I want to, if during winter <laughs> I want to stay at home and be comfy under my kotatsu while talking to you guys over this B-roll that I haven't released yet, then I'm going to fucking do it, god damn it. Um... But yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, I feel like, um, you know, as long, like, I love the fact that if I'm, like, you know, these rants encourage me to go back and actually edit these videos, because the, the hardest part about being a YouTuber, I think, is not, like, planning out content, it's not filming content, it's just going through your content after you filmed it, and then cutting out the parts that you don't need and stuff, and it's like, ah, oh, that's the, that's the biggest pain in the ass, but when I'm doing these rants, I'm talking to you guys, and it, and I'm seeing this footage that I filmed that I haven't reviewed in, like, a while, and it, like, it inspires me to be like, oh, yeah, shit, like, I still have all this footage that I should go and and film again you know and I think that's gonna be the big appeal of my channel like the main channel from now on is that like you know unlike um, I don't need to be a Tokyo lens or an abroad in Japan or whatever like I thought I needed to be a bigger figure like that but I just want to take people around on like more of like a raw experience with me hanging out and doing stuff like I, I mean I still want to experiment with editing stuff and that's what the Friday videos will be on the main channel but um, you know, for the most part, like, I want to fill my channel with just, uh, with just, like, raw kind of, like, experiences like this. Kind of like a bald and bankrupt kind of thing, you know? Obake Yashiki. Yeah, look at this, guys. This is a haunted house, man. And, um, these guys, it's so funny. Like, they went in here. Like, all these dudes are, like, young. They're all, like, like, 20-something dudes. And, like, some of them even, like, were, like, had, like, babies and stuff. And I'm, like, I never see this in Tokyo. Like, these are, these are ghetto-ass people here. And I love it. Like, that's the, that's the thing that I love. You get the down-home cooking people, salt-of-the-earth people here. It's, like, you know, it, it's, like, yeah, I finished high school, knocked up my high school girlfriend. And now I wear, like, really nice, uh, sexy clothing. But it's all ghetto and you don't know the fucking brand name and stuff. Like, I love that, man. I can't get enough of that shit. It's cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's fun. And then like, yeah, look at that. I wanted to go in there, but, um, I was worried it might be too dark so you wouldn't be able to see anything. But look at that. Like, that's so cool. Like, dude, this, they set up all of this shit for a temple just for like a fucking festival. And apparently they have festivals here all the time. So, uh, n you know, next time you go to Japan and you're going to go to Kyoto, Google Gion Festival and see if they're having one near you, like at the time that you're going to Kyoto because this is just like god like the amount of food stalls the amount of like games and stuff that you can play and then like that cool place where you can sit down and just like see all the people interacting there and stuff like that's just so fucking cool man that is just so badass 
And, uh, yeah, look at that. Like, young chicks, super young, drinking fucking alcohol. They're like, yeah, I'm twice I can drink now. And I'm gonna drink. And, yeah, like, um, it still boggles my mind when, uh, uh, who did I talk to the other day? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, so I was talking to my Japanese friend, and, um, and she was like, uh, you know, she told me she had to go to Las Vegas for a business trip because she like they have conventions there, I guess, all the time. And so she went there to represent her company for a convention trip. And she's like, uh, she's like, I heard that in America, you guys can't uh, you're not allowed to drink alcohol uh, on the street. And she's like, when I was in Las Vegas, like one of the people that we were working with said, like, oh, only in Las Vegas in America, you're allowed to drink alcohol on the street. And I'm like, I totally forgot that was a thing, you know. Like, in America, yeah, you can't even walk around and drink alcohol. Like, you're not allowed. You're not, you know, like, nah. Like, you're not, nope. Like, you're not allowed to do it. And so it's just like, that's fucking, that's still nuts to me that it's like, wow, that's a that's a thing. You know, you're not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, but, like, it's just so fun that you could see people just walking around. This is, like, basically, like, Six Flags theme park and people are just drinking. To be fair, though, I never went to a Six Flags theme park, so I don't know if you could drink there. I know in Japan, uh, in um, at Tokyo Disneyland, you can't drink there. But if you go to Tokyo Disney Sea, you can drink there too. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like I don't drink that often, but I always carry a flask, like a full flask, with me, just in case I, if I did want to drink. You know, like uh, it's always nice to get a little pregame going with a you know a couple fucking shots that you're like, okay, yeah, that works. <coughs> I got I got my pregame going. Fuck yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's still funny, cause, like, yeah, guys, for all of you that are young dudes that are coming to Japan and, like, you know, whatever, blah, 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 right, I suggest come to Japan with a flask, because you'll be able to go to Don Quixote and buy, like, some whiskey or whatever, and, uh, or, or some alcohol, whatever alcohol you like, and then you can just fill that up each time you go out, so you don't need to go to the convenience store to pregame or whatever. And look at these guys. These guys were so fun. I was asking them, I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're just hanging out. And I'm like, why are you guys here? And they're like, oh, we were already, like, in the te We went there, and we're just hanging out. And I think they were trying to fuck chicks or something, and uh, they, they were really nice. They, like, they were, I think these guys were in fucking high school or something. Like, that's just, like, and the dude already had a tattoo and stuff. And I'm like, wow. Like, I was like, these guys are cool. See, it's like, you know... That, like, that's what I want to show more on, like, my main channel is just, like, just chilling. And I think that guy with the baseball cap, he's half Japanese or something. And, um, yeah, it's just, like, showing you guys, like, the raw interactions with people. The only catch, though, is that it's just, like, a lot of the fucking people speak Japanese. And, um, a lot of you guys dip off when I fucking have, like, a long Japanese conversation on here with people. But I don't give a fuck, you know? As long as I can, uh, subtitle stuff and it's not too time-consuming for me, like, I'd like to show more, like, fun interactions like this with people. Because you don't see this with anybody, you know? You'll get, like, Abroad in Japan and he's doing high-production stuff. And it's not bad. By the way, I'm not shitting on Abroad in Japan. I'm just saying that, like, you don't get this kind of, like, raw interaction with people. And, like, a lot of the vloggers, like, it seems like today, like, a lot of the English-speaking vloggers are, like, they're either really, really high-production guys who go outside, like, abroad in Japan or Tokyo Lens, or they're high-production dudes that only hang out, in like, inside. Like, you know, like, they get, they have, like, a, a manager or something, and then, like, they go and go to some building or something somewhere, and they have an interaction with people there. And, uh, and then they don't speak Japanese or anything. Like, it's very, very controlled, like a TV show. Or it's, like, Instagram stories where it's just, like, oh, five, you know, like a, a one-minute fucking event where it's just, like, you know, you're talking and it's very, it's, like, a commercial kind of thing, you know? So it's, like, I want my channel to be more slow burn stuff like this where I can just be, like, yeah, we're hanging out with regular people. But it's not, like, a live stream where you don't know what's going on and I'd have to explain it later. I can be, like, no, I can just subtitle this and show you guys what it's like, you know? Like, my... Like, if somebody asked me, it's like, what what is the goal of your channel? Like, what kind of people do you want to congregate uh, at your thing? And I'm like, for me, I just want people that that like Japan, but they're not just like in Japan. Like, they actually want to go deeper, you know? Like, they want to actually fucking learn about, 
you know, <laughs> the language, the culture, the people. But it's not just that. It's like, uh, like, look, like, the worst kind of gaijin, I think, are the gatekeeper ones that are like, these fucking other gaijin are ruining it. And I'm like, motherfucker, you are a gaijin too, bitch. Look in the fucking mirror, man. And, um... You know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, I think there's enough Japan to go around for all of us, and especially if more people fall in love with Japan and actually learn the fucking cult, like, you know, learn how to speak the language and stuff and learn more about the culture, then that means Japan will expand more, you know? Like, Japan will go out and expand more and fuck up people and stuff, you know? Like, uh, teach them the ways of the samurai shit. And I, I like that, you know? I like that idea. Oh, yeah, here's me and the... I had to take a taxi back to the train station because it was so far away and the buses weren't running, so... And I love it too, dude. Like, uh, during this conversation with me and the fucking taxi driver, he's just shitting on Osaka people <laughs> the whole time. And he's like, see, you can't compare us to Osaka because Osaka people, they're ghetto, they're rude. You know, they, like, and I'm like, motherfucker, you're all Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's like, you know, we are refined taste here in Kyoto, you know, don't you compare us to them other people, you know, I, I, I always find it so funny how there's like these rivalries, local rivalries with each other, right? They're like, yeah, man, those guys over there in that next, it's like Springfield and Shelbyville in The Simpsons, you know, like, yeah, fuck those guys, you know, uh, hey, man, your backpack's in, uh, you know, on my side, uh, in Shelbyville, my homework's in Shelbyville, too, oh, no. <laughs> what does freedom mean to me uh i miss him you know i gotta rewatch simpsons man could i get away of watching like rewatching simpsons on kick i wonder i wonder that'd be fun yeah and one thing that kind of sucks is that like lcd tvs are like everywhere these days like they're not even fun you know like it's like uh remember when lcds like a lcd like that would cost like 500 dollars or something back in the day and now it's just like you can buy them for like dude i have a tablet here that's that I'm looking at right now. That was like less than eighty dollars, and it just I use it to watch YouTube videos, and read books, and uh, it's actually so fucking slow. I just use it to watch like one YouTube video or something. Like it's not that good, but um, yeah, it's just so funny that LCD screens are everywhere these days. But yeah, I don't know. That, that was a fun interaction with this guy just being like, "Yeah, Kyoto, su uh, Kyoto's awesome. Osaka sucks. It's a bunch of fucking." fucking douchebags yeah and i'm like yeah this guy's funny um i don't know it's just uh the snobbiness uh, i mean to be fair i think people in kyoto probably have more money but uh osaka people know how to make money so i, I don't know what that means but yeah dude um god you know and it sucks because i only got to spend a day in kyoto and uh i don't i don't like that i wanted to you know for these like tattoo um for the tattoo series, I wanted to be able to spend, like, a, at least, like, a couple days to a week in each fucking place, you know? And, um, you know, and because of this, I wasn't able to do that, you know? Like, uh, I was only, I only had, like, a week in, uh, Kansai, so I went to Kyoto for a day, and I went to Hyogo for a day, you know? And I'm like, ah, so, um... But, yeah, I mean, this was still fun, though. Like, I still got to, I got to see my buddy... Before I went to get my tattoo, so it's like, you know, I, I heard uh, some... Oh, yeah, there's Kyoto Tower right there. Now you're playing with towers, Nintendo Towers. What? Um, you know, like, my thing is, like, uh, I heard somewhere that it's like, if you feel like you, you're not getting enough stuff done, write down a to-do list of things that you need to do, and then just pick three things out of that and do those. And then once you finish those, then worry about all the extra shit. And so, like, when I go on these trips, it's usually like, okay, I want to go, uh, I have all these extra things that I can do, but the first thing is, is, like, call a friend, if a friend is in that town, and my buddy Daro was in this town at that time, and uh, my ex-co-worker, uh, who works for Nintendo now, was in that town, so I got drinks with both of them, and, uh, yeah, we had daytime drinks, it was nice, and then, um, and then afterwards... Uh, what else did we do? Uh, and then, like, afterwards I went to get the tattoo, and then after that I went to the festival. So I was like, okay, the things I'm gonna do today are I'm gonna meet my buddy, I'm gonna get the tattoo, and then I'm gonna find something else to do at night, and then after that I'll go and do something else, you know? And, uh, that was, that was fun, that was nice, you know? And so, like, uh, Kyoto's one of those places where I feel like you really do need a car, or, like, um... Or at least uh, you got to have a hotel. Like, you got to stay there because it's just like, um, you know, getting around the town is just kind of a pain in the ass, you know. But 
Anyway, yeah, look at this. There was just a, a fucking piano in the station. Maybe this was Osaka station. But, um, yeah, it's funny because, like, a video went viral recently of, like, some guy taking a video of... This might be the same place. I don't know. There was a guy taking a video of a uh, piano player in Osaka. And uh, this Chinese couple or tourist couple were like, Hey, you can't film me. Don't you fucking film me. And uh, the guy's like, I'm filming the piano guy. What the fuck's your problem? They're like, you can't film me. And he's like, bitch, you're a fucking tourist like me. You don't tell me how to fucking... <laughs> don't tell me about the privacy laws of this country, you punk-ass bitch. But I get it. I get what the guy was getting angry about. I think it's just that he was on a fucking... He was cheating on his wife or something. Or like, you know... They were doing some China spy shit or something, you know. They they were being <coughs> they were being bad news bears, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I love that. Like I wish sometimes I could play piano just so I could do stuff like that. It's funny because my friend's son has like an Instagram account in Australia, and uh, he's half Japanese, and his son has an account where he just goes around and he. Uh, what does he do? And he just, like, plays, um, the piano. Like, that's what he does. He, like, goes to these public places and just plays the piano. Uh, I don't know if he wants to be on TV or if he wants to be a musician or something, but I'm like, okay, that's cool. But, well, yeah, whenever I see this, I just think of my friend, my friend's son trying to get famous by just, do, like, playing the piano in public. I don't know. Like, I, whenever I think of people playing piano in public, I also think of, uh, that one guy who is, like playing the keyboard in New Orleans and then that black chick came up and she fucking like slammed his keyboard down and then took his money and then the whole internet went after her and I'm like that was some beach justice dude fuck that bitch you know but like, y'all need to stop harassing me fuck you you need to stop being a shit person and harassing people just trying to live their lives lady yeah you know but um but anyway she got her comeuppance it was okay she got her beach justice it was enacted hard and hard and and, uh, and sexually, like coffee, like coffee does. Coffee's the man, the myth, the legend. And look at this takoyaki, dude. That is like, it's the best, man. I fucking love takoyaki. Takoyaki's the shit. Yeah, this guy felt, this guy's like, you're not even gonna buy some shit? And I'm like, nah, nah, I'm not buying it. Nah, I'm okay. <laughs> I, you know, I shouldn't have eaten before I came here, dude. So it's like, uh, but yeah, oh, again, like on a separate note, like, oh, the, like Japanese food is just so fucking good, right? It's just so fucking good, man. Like, uh, and like the thing is, it's so funny because it's like I grew up half the time on the coast of America, and seafood, aside from like crab, was always fucking expensive. Like, you know, um, like everything. You didn't get, you didn't eat salmon, you didn't eat fucking, um, lobster or anything. Like, it was always like just fried scallops or something and like maybe some like and the crab the crab uh the crab grill crab roast whatever we call it the crab crab fucking spinach crab smashing it but you're young so you can't drink the beers uh and it's cool one of my um one of my business students uh she uh, she lived in baltimore for a little bit and i lived in maryland for a little bit and uh yeah like one of my fondest memories from maryland is just going and buying a shit ton of the spin uh what is it the celery spice crabs and just smashing them at a table and just fucking uh, and like everyone else is drinking light beer and shit and i'm like oh dude i never got to drink the beer but like that was I don't know. I feel like if you still have that option in America, like that's a very American thing. And I love that that they put that in the series, uh, The Wire. You know, like when the cops are all getting drunk and just doing that, and that was fun. Oh yeah, look at these guys. This is me back in Osaka, and I'm just saying hi to people. And uh, I forgot what I was asking them, but they they said hi to me, so I'm like, what? Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? And they're like, Hey, what's going on, man? We're here. We're young. We're cool. We're in charge, man. Everything from A to X, Armani Exchange. Do any of you guys that I don't think I feel like none of you guys who watch me actually like buy expensive shit? But what do you think? You know, um, mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, coffee, coffee. Why won't they let us be together? Look at these guys. They're they're having fun. I, that guy is he drinking a Jamba Juice? No, that's McDonald's. Oh shit. I remember they had Jamba Juice here for like two seconds as like a pop-up shop. And I understand why Japan never, um, I don't understand why people do pop-up shops here if you're a brand because the pop-up shops always are successful. They always have the max amount of fucking people participating in them the day they release. So 
I don't really understand why they do that. Like, what's the purpose? They're already making money for that day. They're already gaining interest. So, um, I don't know. That's funny. But yeah, these guys are cool. These guys are badass. This is me. Uh, I think after I got my um, my Osaka tattoo. Oh yeah, they're they were asking like, oh, do you do YouTube? And I'm like, yeah. And this is when I used to write my uh, channel name on my phone. I should still write that down. No, I should make business cards. My buddy Coco, he had a business card, and uh, I realized he goes to these sporting events. Like the guy I was talking to at the beginning of this, my buddy Coco Sports, right? He, I, I checked his Twitter. And he has so many Japanese followers, even though his whole all of his contents in, in English, right? But Japanese people just love the fact that like people get into Japanese, like they're into Japanese stuff, you know. And uh, anyway, they followed him. Uh, like what is it? like he always hands out business cards to all these people that he meets, you know. And uh, I'm like, yeah, dude. Like I, I need to make business cards and start handing that out to people. <coughs> yeah. But anyway, these guys were cool. They were having fun. That was nice. Um, yeah, and this was... Uh, God, what was that guy's name? His name was Dave or something. And there's me, and I was hanging out with Dave. He's a viewer of mine that lives in Osaka. And he was really nice. He was nice enough to show me around. Um, yeah, Triple, if you're watching this, this is before I met you, Triple. Otherwise, it would have had you show me around, you sexy man, you. Um... Yeah, one of uh, one of my viewers who contributes a lot in the during the live streams and in the Discord, he's in Osaka too, and this is before I got to meet him. Um, but yeah, look at this—we're just walking down the streets and stuff. And yeah, this is uh, this is like another reason why I love living in Tokyo better than other places. Like this is Osaka, right? This is supposed to be the boppiest, boppinest area of Osaka, and some places are open, but a lot of places are closed. You know. And so it's like the places that you want to go at nighttime are always, um, they're always kind of like shut off in most places. And that's not just Osaka, that's anywhere, right? But uh, this is another reason why I moved to Kabukicho in Tokyo is just because it's like, okay, what if I had bad insomnia or something? Then I can take a whole fucking, I I'm like, oh man, I can't sleep. And then I can just go somewhere. There's tons of 24-hour places that are open right near me. So it's like... I'm not, you know, it's like uh, Doc Brown in Back to the Future where he's like, what? roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. And I'm like, here, I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, like uh, only daytime, <laughs> only daytime businesses where we're going, we don't need daytime businesses. Oh, yeah, and there's my hot gay son, Bobby. I love Bobby. He's in the trench coat. He's looking all fucking Sherlock Holmesy. And yeah, these guys were, uh, <coughs> These guys were supporting their buddy who was doing like a live stream and street performing at the same time. And like, that's awesome, man. I love seeing these bros just fucking hang out and shit. And there's my boy. There's my, there's my boy. That's my son, Bobby, guys. I've known him. Uh, God, I've known him a long time, man. And he was one of my first subscribers. And now he lives in Tokyo. Or no, he doesn't live in Tokyo. He lives in Osaka. And he's super fluent in Japanese. Like, I, I, I'm a translator professionally. And that guy, he doesn't even translate. And his Japanese is fucking great. And uh, on top of that, he's an author now. Like, he has, like, a published fucking child's book and shit. Like, he has, like, legit books that you could buy online, you know? And, um, and like, he's one of those guys who loves fucking, like, uh, like soccer. Even though soccer's gay. He, <laughs> he likes soccer, and, uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's, it's cool, man. Like, uh, I love the fact that it's, like, whenever I go to Kansai, I know that Bobby will make time for me to go and hang out. And, um, I don't know, I'm just, I'm so proud of him, man. Like, he did what a lot of viewers say they want to do, but he actually did it. Like, he wanted to move to Japan. He ended up moving here. He, you know, like, he wanted to, like, learn Japanese fluently, and he did it. And, like, you know, like, I, I don't know. It's just, like, look, I know that my advice is not the fucking end-all, be-all thing for advice for everybody, right? But, like, you know, it, there's nothing worse than the feeling of somebody wasting your time asking for your advice, and then they don't take it, you know? Especially when it comes to things that you know that if they did it, they like, their life would be better. But Bobby always took my advice, you know? And I'm happy to say it worked out for him, you know? Like, I, like when he was, like, when he first started learning Japanese, 
He's like, um, I, I gave him shit because he was hanging out with a lot of foreigners. And I'm like, Bobby, stop that. Like, you know, if you want to learn Japanese quicker, you need to make Japanese friends. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, dude. And he started doing it. He started fucking doing it. He like, you know, he hung out with Japanese people more and more. And like, you know, um, and he's just like this guy. Like, he's a he's a good looking dude. And uh, <coughs> I was like, dude, fucking flex nuts with your good lookingness, man. You'll do fine. And, like, he's created this whole fucking, this whole world of, like, you know, people around him and stuff. And, yep, look at these guys just smoking, not giving a shit. And this, uh, this dude was cool. This guy was playing, uh, like, requests, so I was like, let's sing some anime songs. And, yeah, even Bobby. Bobby knows more. Like, you know, that's the thing. Like, when you're in, when you're not in Tokyo, like, when you're in Tokyo, it's so easy to be surrounded by foreigners and English and stuff. But... You know, when you're outside Tokyo and you have those Japanese friends and you want to relate to them better, you're going to want to know what they're into. Excuse me. You're going to want to know what they're into so you can get into it as well, you know? <laughs> and so Bobby knew a bunch of Japanese songs that I didn't even know. And so he was singing along with that guy and stuff. And yeah, that was uh, that was cool. Uh, you know, that, that, that's still... I don't know. Again, it's just like... It's, it's like... Uh, Embracing the foreign parts of you, but at the same time, uh, like keeping the assimilation game up, and that's the cool thing. And yeah, I don't know. I just I have like a thing wherever I meet somebody that's Japanese that has like blonde hair. I always want to shout them out. Oh yeah, look at that guy, Hayato Seki. Instagram is Seki M. I don't know. Well, anyway, go back and go back and look that up, guys, <coughs> and uh, go follow that guy. If somebody's watching this right now, can you pause that? And put that guy's Instagram name in uh, the comment section, uh, and I will, I will, I will go and find the URL, and I'll put that in there too, so you guys can go follow him and give him some support, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, this is the. Oh, I guess is this the is this his music video? And cool, if that's his music video, that's badass. Fuck yeah, dude. But I just, I love that, because it's like, in Tokyo, this is like one of the reasons why Tokyo sucks ass, you know? Tokyo's a fucking awesome city, they've got a lot of good shit for them, but at the same time, Tokyo doesn't really allow street performance like this, you know? They don't really allow street performance like this, and uh, if they do, like, they get in trouble, like, pretty quickly. So, uh, it's nice that, like, people can do this. Like, you know, Tokyo, like, I remember, um, like... It wasn't until a couple years ago that it's like people when they would do a uh, hip hop like um like hip hop lessons and stuff what they would do is they would go to these uh office buildings that don't have anybody around there because they didn't want to rent out a studio to do their um do their classes at and then they would teach these people uh like just outside uh the office building and then they're like you can't do that here and I'm like why no one's using this and they're like, well, because you're not paying us money and me. And, like, you know, you're you're being a distraction to the people around us. And it's like, there's no fucking people. It's all office building. Like, the only people that are angry are probably the fucking security guards that are trying to sleep, <laughs> you know? Yeah, when it comes down to it, they just want money. That's all it is, right? <clears throat> they just want that fucking cash. Cash money, bitches. Mm. That's another nice thing about being a foreigner in Japan. <laughs> If you go and you watch a street performance, people are going to be like, oh, hey, like, oh, the foreigner likes this. So, like, oh, I wonder I wonder what's going on here. You know, I'm, I'm curious. I want to see what's going on. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's fun. Uh, yeah. Again, again, like, I guess, like, Tokyo is, like, the place where you go after you've lived in a place that's not Tokyo. Because some people like having that small local feel to it, you know. Like, some people really like having that, like, smaller world kind of shit. And, like, really, like, getting that, that hometown pride. Like, I don't think there's a lot of hometown pride when it comes to Tokyo. Because everybody moves to Tokyo. There's not a lot of people that are like, I was here from Tokyo. They call, uh, they call Japanese people who, uh, they're, like, for generations have been in Tokyo. They call them Edoko, which means child of, of Edo. And uh, that means that you're, like, a, a person there. And it's just so funny. This is, like, one of those things that, like, you bring up in a conversation when you're well, when you're talking to random Japanese people and stuff. And, you know, it's funny. It's just, like, seeing these clips and stuff, um, you know, it makes me think about how it's, like, the people that talk shit about Japan or, like, Japanese people the most are the people that are way too hypersensitive to how, and like, and, like, they have way too much, like, high expectations on how 
Japanese people should, uh, you know, like react to them and interact with them. And, um, you know, my whole thing is like, just have low expectations. Like, just don't have any expectation. Be like, yeah, whatever. Like, if it's a good interaction, it's a good interaction. And like, you know, it's like, uh, I, I, you know, I feel so embarrassed that I went through a phase while I was here where I was like, they need to treat me like a Japanese person. They're never going to treat me as a Japanese person. I'm like, dude, you never grew like you didn't grow up here. You know, you didn't grow up here. You don't look Japanese. And it's like, well, there's other people that grew up here that don't, that don't look Japanese. And they know like all they know is Japanese culture, society versus their own home place. And I'm like. Yeah, that might be true, but it's like, at the same time, just because you're different doesn't mean that that's a bad thing, you know? I mean, like, when you think about that, like, think about all the half-Japanese people that don't look Japanese, but they don't get treated as Japanese, you know? And it's like, um, it's like, it's not, I don't know, it's just like one of those things where it's like, if you're blind, you can't not be blind, you know? So it's like, you just kind of got to adapt, and you don't let that thing that could ruin your life you don't let you know like you tried to overpass that you know you tried to get done with that and look at me i'm being fat and i'm singing with this guy i think he was gonna sing dragon ball z or something now but um yeah i don't know man it's just like uh it's one of those things where it's like if you're grounded and you have like like there's this guy on twitter ugh, i forgot his name it's it's in english and japanese but uh he's this cool dude i don't know if he likes me but i like him uh, he's this cool guy who, um, he practices Iaido, like, uh, he does sword stuff, and he does, like, I think judo and stuff in Japan, he's been here for a while, and he's, like, this bald, like, uh, white guy, and, um, he's always just shitting, like, you know, he's always shitting on all these other foreigners who complain on Twitter, which isn't a bad thing, like, you know, like, I think, uh, whiny bitches should be called out, but, like, uh, you know, like, he's, he, he kind of preaches the same thing I say, where it's, like, get a Japanese hobby, make Japanese friends, learn Japanese, you know, and, um, and, like, I, I think, like, if you do that, you're gonna be a lot more solid and happy in life, because, like, you know, it's, like, uh, <coughs> at least when you're in Japan, right, and, um, you know, like, for me, it's, like, I love Japanese karaoke, you know, like, I love singing Japanese songs, and, um, I don't know, it's, just, it's like one of those things where it's like you can get inside jokes and people will still get it, right? Like I, um, like, uh, like, what is it? Like one of the first schools I taught at, right? Like I would always go out drinking and doing karaoke with the gym teacher there. And, um, and like, you know, he would sing these old fucking songs, right? From like old animes because he was older than me, right? But like because he, we went out so much and he would always sing those fucking songs, like it's very nostalgic for me to hear those songs and so like the other day I'm in Golden Guy and some guy was singing that song I think it was the um what was it it wasn't Guy Gal Geiger it was like um Jaga Gaga Giga Giga I don't know it was like Uchu Uchu Tante or something it's like it's like space private detective or something and uh god I can't remember his name Gaiga or I think it was Gaiga but Anyway, I mean, the whole point is, is that, like, that was nostalgic for me. So I'm like, Natsukashi, Natsukashi. And he's like, Natsukashi. And he's like, wait, why is that nostalgic for you? Like, you probably weren't or even born during that time. And I'm like, oh, no, I just, I had a coworker that really liked that song. But, I mean, Japanese people, are always, they always say, like, Nondeshiten, like, Nondeshitenno? Nondeshiteru? You know, and like, why do you know that? And I'm like, yeah, you know, just, I like stuff, you know? Um... And like, I mean, that's the that's the reason why you guys got to get into pop culture shit in Japan, and make Japanese friends. Because the more Japanese friends you make, and you understand, uh, like, you realize there's a lot of like inside jokes that you don't understand. The more you're gonna want to get into that pop culture stuff, so you can make the same jokes that they do. I mean, it's the same thing like when you move to a new school or something, and then they're like, you know, like uh, I remember I moved to a new school when I was in middle school, and all of those guys liked pro wrestling, and I had never watched pro wrestling and so like I asked my mom to get us cable and we got cable so I could watch like uh, raw and stuff and then uh, and then like I had like a common thing to talk to those guys about and so the same thing here it's just like yeah man I mean like you learn ja you watch Japanese movies or Japanese TV shows like you know learn those old Japanese songs and stuff and people really appreciate it man like they they like it for that and like again like it's just kind of being grounded and hanging out and just enjoying yourself you know and, um, okay, okay, yeah, I just, uh, I checked, and that, we're singing the Digimon theme song, Butterfly, which, the, but the Digimon song in, 
English sucks ass. That's not that good. But the Japanese one's amazing. Anyway, this is a nice lady who came up and started talking to me in Osaka. And she told me, like, her whole life story and stuff. And she was actually pretty cool. This is a, a place called Triangle Park. It's called uh, Sankaku Koen or whatever. And this is the place where all the cool kids hang out in Osaka. And uh, anyway, I was just hanging out here waiting for Bobby, I think, before I hung out with Bobby that night. And this lady was really nice. She came up and talked to me, and she told me, like, about how, from what I remember, I, 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 not, I didn't re-listen to the conversation yet, but I remember she told me that she was, uh, like, she basically, like, um, like, married this African dude, and he left. Uh, total surprise. <laughs> and, uh, and he left, and so she's a single mother, and she's like, sometimes I like to go out. And my mom watches uh, my kid and stuff for me, and I'm like, okay, wow, and you know, that's that's that sucks. But she's, you know, she's telling me about her life, and she was a little bit, a little bit bonker, you know. But she was, she was nice. She was, you know, cordial, civil kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, like, it's just so like this is like the thing I love about the traveling, right? You just get to meet all these random people from all different walks of life and get to hear their stories and stuff. And um, you know, it was just, uh, it's um, you know. It's, it, it's nice to have these interactions. It's just like you, the best, what is it? It's like the best people that have like the best uh, conversational skills are the ones that don't, they don't listen to reply. They just listen to fucking let people talk, you know? And I forgot like who fucking said it? Like what was that quote where it's like, I had some of the best conversations of my life with a guy I met on an airplane. And it's like, oh really? What kind of guy was he? And he's like, I don't, you know, to be honest, I didn't really talk that much about him you know he didn't really talk he let me talk most of the time and it's like yeah like that's the whole thing like when you can get people to talk and just the, everyone has a story everyone has something they want to they want to talk about or they want to like you know they want people to know like this is what they are like this is what they like to do or whatever like you know that's when you give people the chance to do that like it's just uh you know it's fun i don't know if i want to do like a soft white underbelly style kind of like channel at some point with Japanese people where they come and sit down in my photo studio, but like uh, just getting a collection of just these random raw like interactions with Japanese people, like I I don't know, that, like that's what I'd I'd love to do for this channel, you know, just show you guys this stuff and just get like these random random encounters, you know, like like you know everyone again like it's like it's so controlled. It's so like, yeah, we can only show from this point of view or like we have to edit it or whatever. It's like, it's so, um, you know, like, what do you call it? It's, it's just like, uh, it's, I don't know, you know, I mean, like, it's just, it doesn't feel like you're getting like a genuine experience. And with this kind of stuff, it's like, yeah, you are, you know, oh, fuck, there's an earthquake happening right now. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, man. Okay, that's shaking quite a bit. Uh-oh. Gotta pause my black jazz here for a second. You gotta put on the camera when this happens, because the cameraman doesn't die, right? You gotta do that. Sometimes, you know, this is the thing about being in Japan. Is that, uh... This is the thing about being in Japan, is that, like, sometimes earthquakes do happen. And you just gotta be... You just gotta accept it, right? Like, they happen all the time here for some reason. Like, Japan has the best four seasons out of any country. The best snow in any country. But they also... And, like, the best seafood of any country. But they also have fucking earthquakes. Okay, that's done. Shit. Anyway, that's... Uh, I think I'm going to end the video for right now, guys. But, um... Yeah, anyway, I had a lot... I had fun. You know, I didn't really have... I, I know that I should have, like, a, a topic when I talk about this shit. But... I didn't really have a, um, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to spiel for an hour. And, uh, yeah, I was able to do what I wanted to do with the spieling. So thank you guys for checking out the video. Thank you for watching this. Um, if you made it this far, the secret comment of the day is lady in the blue hat. Just type that in, lady in the blue hat, and then I'll know that you guys made it this far. And, uh, did you smash the like button? Even if you didn't like it, smash the dislike button. It's still engagement, but... 
And thank you guys so much always for the love and support and checking out this channel. And yeah, you know, I will, as soon as it gets warmer, there's going to be more walking around fucking streams and stuff, or snatch streams or rants and shit. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I'll probably be putting the URL for the live stream in the premiere chat right now. So make sure to click on that and go follow, you know, go hang out with me during the live stream on the main channel after this. And uh, yeah. I will talk to you guys later. You stay black and uh, enjoy the karaoke after this. Yeah, buddy. Oh